7 Star Wars Actors Who Passed Away Star Wars is by all means one of the most influential and wildly recognizable film series of all time. The original film was released back in 1977, but the series is still going strong to this day, with new installments being added to the franchise almost yearly. Because of the sheer volume of actors who have played a role in Star Wars, there have been several actors who have passed away over the years. We are all aware of the legendary Carrie Fisher, who lost her life back in 2016, but many other lesser-known actors have passed away as well. Number 7. Kenny Baker did you know what you were getting yourself into when you did Star Wars? Not really, no. I turned it down. I said, I don't need stuck in a robot. What for, for goodness sake, you know? Kenny Baker was one of the main stars of the Star Wars series, but very few people ever knew what he looked like. This is because Kenny was the man who played R2-D2. Many of us likely assumed that R2-D2 is either robotic or a puppet of some sort, but Kenny was actually inside the costume for all six of the original movies. Kenny was just 3 feet 8 inches tall at the time of filming, and many of the cast on set of the movies claim that Kenny was the one who gave R2-D2 his personality and quirks. Baker was considered to be a little person, but he certainly didn't let this get in the way of becoming a big-time movie star. Kenny managed to live a long and healthy life, passing away at the young age of 81 back in 2016. After the news of his passing was published, an article was posted on the official Star Wars website, remembering Kenny. The article stated whether it was the slow turn of R2's doom to convey suspicion, or the nervous wobbles signifying fear, Baker made a robotic being seem very human. Baker wasn't only the actor for R2-D2 though, as he also made an appearance as an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. After taking many years off, he then returned to the role of R2-D2 for the entire prequel series without missing a beat. Kenny has been dearly missed, and the Star Wars series will never be the same without him. And I'm signing autographs, it's in photographs. And this lady came up and she said, would you sign this? And she was about 30, 35, and she burst into tears. So she was really crying. I said, what are you crying for? <laughs> now I never normally have this effect on women. Number 6. Eric Bowersfeld It's empty. They're just trying to pull our attention away. It's a trap! Eric Bowersfeld played a relatively small role in the Star Wars series, but his role was one of the most iconic of the whole franchise. He only appeared in the Return of the Jedi film, and only appeared on screen for a few minutes, having very few lines. However, the line he delivered eventually became one of the most memorable in Star Wars history, as Eric was the man behind the phrase, It's a trap! It's a trap! Since then, the phrase has become an internet meme and sensation, with the line being spoofed in countless television series and comedy specials. Ew. I enjoy mimicry. I've been working on Admiral Akbar from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> it's a trap! Eric passed away in 2016 as well, but he was remembered more for his work as a radio producer than for his time working on the Star Wars trilogy. Eric told a story of how his role in Star Wars happened completely by chance. He says that he was working on a radio project one day when one of the sound designers for the series heard his voice and asked him to audition for a role. From there, the rest is history, and Eric has left behind an iconic line that will ensure his legacy will not soon fade. Number 5. Phil Brown Phil Brown played a very small role in the Star Wars franchise in terms of screen time. However, he may have played one of the most important roles in Luke Skywalker's entire character arc. He played the role of Uncle Owen, who appeared in the original series for just a few short minutes before dying within the first hour of the film. His death impacted Luke Skywalker in a very meaningful way and led to a major character development that changed the course of the movie. Phil had a relatively interesting life leading up to his role in Star Wars. He was known to have associated with several individuals in Hollywood who the government had reason to believe were part of a communist agenda. In the 1950s, this was a very serious political issue, and Phil was apprehended on several occasions and interrogated for his knowledge of these individuals. He never revealed the names of any of these alleged individuals, but he was eventually blacklisted and was forced to move to London to continue his acting career. As fate would have it, George Lucas began casting for the series in London, and Phil happened to audition for a role. Before he knew it, Phil was on set filming one of the most important scenes in A New Hope. Number 4. Peter Cushing 
Peter Cushing was a very well-known actor before his appearance in Star Wars. He had made quite a name for himself in the UK, and had appeared in a seemingly endless list of films in the 70s. He was later cast in Grand Moff Tarkin in A New Hope, with many believing that his on-screen performance outshined that of Darth Vader, and made him a more intimidating character than any of the villains in the first film. Peter is most well-known for his work in several horror films, specifically Dracula and Frankenstein from the 50s and 60s. These films have since gone on to be cult classics, with Peter also playing several roles as Sherlock Holmes. Peter eventually passed away in 1991, when he was just 81 years old. However, 20 years after his death, Peter returned for a role in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Yes, you heard that correctly. 20 years after he passed away, Peter was able to return for a role in Rogue One. Due to the studio's use of CGI and other digital imaging technologies, it was extremely heartwarming to see such a captivating character return for a role so many years after he passed away, and we just wish he could have been around long enough to see how much of a success the film series would become all those years later. Number 3. Peter Diamond Peter Diamond is a man with an extremely interesting background in the Star Wars films. This is because he didn't play a single character, but several. He was most well known for his work as a stuntman in several major films. However, in the original Star Wars trilogy, he played a shocking number of important parts. He played the roles of A. Koba, Garouf Lafoe, and numerous background characters who needed to perform dangerous stunts throughout filming. He was also one of the lead stunt coordinators for the original trilogy, and worked to create several of the famous lightsaber styles that were used by Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Peter had quite a fulfilling life in Hollywood stunt work, and passed away in 2004, at the age of 74. His work on the series will never be forgotten, and he will continue to be dearly missed by fans across the world. Number 2. Sheila Frazier Sheila Frazier is another well-known English actress who played a very small role in the film. Yet again though, this role was pivotal for major character development and changed the course of the film after just a few short scenes. Frazier played Baru, Luke's aunt. She loses her life early on in the film, but this helps mold Luke Skywalker into the incredible character that he becomes, much like the role of Uncle Owen. Frazier had played in numerous movies and television series before her appearance in Star Wars, and made a decent name for herself as an actress. Many fans claim that her role in the series shaped Luke more than any other event in the original films, and helped pave the way for him to take down the Empire. Her performance on screen was stellar to say the least. She stole every scene that she was in, and certainly became one of the most critically acclaimed actresses in the entire franchise. Number 1. Alec Guinness To be on the last day of a film when the script arrived, and I thought, oh, George Lucas. And then I opened it and saw it was science fiction. I thought, not for me. Alec Guinness may have played one of the most important roles in the entire series. He portrayed Obi-Wan Kenobi, a character who set the tone for the entire film series, and has made some sort of an impact on nearly every film in the franchise. However, Alec wasn't very proud of his role in the film. He looked down upon the series as a whole, and felt as though it was rather unbelievable and poorly written. In an interview, he was quoted as calling the film fairy tale rubbish. I have no intention of revisiting any galaxy. I shrivel inside each time it's mentioned." This didn't stop him from delivering one of the most believable performances in the film, though. Alec passed away in the year 2000 at the impressive age of 86. He is remembered as being extremely bitter about the films, to the point that he would refuse to respond to fan mail, and even refused to discuss his role as Obi-Wan on several occasions. A couple of weeks ago in a Chinese restaurant, the dapper little Chinese maitre d' bowed low as I left and, full of Chinese smiles, said, Sagin, now that Star Wars is being shown again, you will be famous once more. Oh, to be Ernest Thesiger. However, he certainly left some difficult shoes to fill when his role was passed on to Ewan McGregor for the prequel trilogy. Regardless of his stance on the films, he has been missed by fans all across the world who believe that he may have been the single best actor in the original trilogy. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on your favorite TV shows, and tap one of the two videos on screen for another amazing video.